guys and welcome back to reading club so today i'm going to read you my weird school mr klutz is nuts chapter seven and chapter eight chapter seven teacher for a day the news about the big chocolate party blew through the school like a hurricane even kids who were allergic to chocolate wanted to go just so they could see mr klutz kiss a pig on the lips where is he going to get a pig? Ryan asked during lunch the next day. He could try AJ's house, Andrea said. That's so funny, I forgot to laugh, I said. I'm not entirely sure that pigs have lips, said Emily. Of course they have lips, I insisted. If they didn't have lips, how could they whistle? You know, Ryan pointed out, Mr. Klutz is just trying to trick us into doing lots of math problems. That's why we're having a chocolate party. Who cares, Michael said, as long as we get the chocolate. I think that only students who do math problems should be allowed to come to the chocolate party, said Andrea. Could it possibly be any more boring, I asked her. As it turned out, everybody was doing math problems. The whole school started doing math problems like crazy. Even Ryan. You would have thought that Mr. Klutz was giving us golden diamonds instead of chocolate. I did math problems for 20 minutes last like night, Ryan bragged while we were waiting for Miss Daisy after recess. Oh yeah, Michael said, well I did math problems for 40 minutes last night. 40 is twice as many 20. 40 is twice as many as 20. See, I just did another math problem right there. Well, I did math problems for an hour last night, I said. That's 50 whole minutes. An hour is 60 minutes, dumbhead, Andrea told me. I was going to tell her that 60 minutes was a TV show my parents watch, but Mr. Klutz suddenly burst into our classroom. He told us that Miss Daisy had a dentist appointment and we would have a substitute teacher for the rest of the afternoon. Mr. Klutz, we all gasped. You're not a teacher, I told him. I used to be a teacher, he said. I taught for many years before I became a principal. What did you teach? Ryan asked. Physics, he said. What's that? I asked. Is that like phys ed? Asked Michael. Mr. Klutz, do you know that this is second grade? Andrea pointed out. Physics is something high school students study. Poppycock, said Mr. Klutz, you're never too young to learn something new. You may find you're smarter than you think. Well, if you say so. Physics is the study of motion and energy and force, he said. For example, if I take a blackboard eraser in one hand and a book in the other hand, and I drop them at the same time, which one will hit the floor first? The eraser, I said, it's smaller and lighter, so it will fall faster. Just like the small, light kids run faster than big, heavy kids. No, the book will hit the floor first, insisted Ryan. Bigger and heavier things build up more speed than little things. I think they'll both hit the floor at the same time, said Andrea. Let's do a test, said Mr. Klutz. He put the eraser in his left hand and a, Sorry. And a paper book in his right hand. Then he climbed on top of Miss Daisy's desk and held both objects up in the air. Then he dropped them. The eraser and the book hit the ground at the exact same moment. I told you so, said Andrea. I think I hate her more every day. According to the laws of physics, all objects fall at the exact same time. Mr. Klutz told us, see, you're learning physics in second grade. Wait a minute, said Michael. That's not fair and that's not a fair test because the eraser and the book are almost the same size and weight. Yes. Yeah, Ryan said. Try with different objects, okay? Mr. Klutz said as he picked up a pencil off Miss Daisy's desk. Then he went over to the windowsill where Miss Daisy kept her collection of stuffed animals. He picked up a giraffe that was almost as big as I am. Would this be a fair test? He asked. Yeah, we all shouted. Now, which object do you think will hit the floor first? He said as he climbed up on top of Miss Daisy's desk again. The pencils, Nova shouted. The giraffe, other kids yelled. I think they will both hit the floor at the same instant, said Andrea. Okay, let's do a test, said Mr. Klotz. 
as he raised both of his arms in the air. Mr. Klutz put his foot on a crayon that was sitting on Miss Daisy's desk. It rolled a little. His foot slipped. He rubbled for a moment, trying to keep his balance. Then he pitched headfirst off the desk. Watch out! Crash. When he hit the floor, the pencil and the giraffe went flying, and Mr. Klutz's arms and legs went in different directions. It was just about the funniest thing that ever happened in the history of the world. You should have been there. We all ran over to see if Mr. Klutz was okay. He was holding his leg and moaning. See, Andrea said, all three objects hit the ground at the same time. The pencil, the giraffe, and Mr. Klutz. So I was right. I hate her. Chapter 8. Mr. Klutz puckers up. When Mr. Klutz got back from the hospital, we were all relieved to hear that he hadn't broken any bones. He was limping them and told us he would have to use a cane for a week. We were afraid he might call off the chocolate party, but he was more excited about it than ever. Everybody in the whole school got involved doing math problems so we could win the party, even the teachers. During library period, Mrs. Ruby asked us questions like, if the library had a hundred books and you checked out fifty of them, how many would be left in the library? During music period, Mr. Hind asked us questions like, If the school only has ten trumpets and six kids sign up to take trumpet lessons, how many more kids can sign up for trumpet lessons? Miss Daisy made a big toe board so we could know we would know how many math problems we had completed. Every day she trailed up all the math problems on our tote board. It wasn't long before the school had finished a million math problems. Andrea did the problem that put us in over the top. Of course, I hate her. On the night of the chocolate party, you should have seen the gym. They had music and games and tables were set up with chocolate chip cookies, chocolate cake, chocolate muffins, and even broccoli covered with chocolate. Yuck. By the end of the party, I thought I was going to throw up. It was the greatest night of my life. At 9 o'clock, somebody came in with this pig on a leash. I don't know where they got it. The zoo, I guess. We all watched as the pig was brought up, brought over to Mr. Klutz. He wrinkled his face up and acted like he was all disgusted. Mr. Klutz, that is, not the pig. When he bent over and kissed the pig on the lips, the whole school went crazy. Even the pig freaked out, oinking and squealing and running around the gym until the grown-ups were able to catch it. It was a real Kodak moment, if you ask me. So that's the end of this channel. I hope you enjoy my readings. And if you did, please click many likes to subscribe reading club. So I'll come back later with a new and improved channel. Bye everybody. See you later.